Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome to the Sidereal Insights Astro Update for July 30th. We have a lot to talk about today, uh, in part because we are in the middle of eclipse season. We've got a lot of retrograde activity going on. Uh, but in Sidereal Insights, in this broadcast, what we do is we explore the, the astrology of the current planetary uh, transits across the heavens from a western sidereal perspective, specifically using the Fagan Bradley Zodiac, which is what I use in my practice. If you need to look up your sidereal sign placements, there's an easy online calculator at mysticphysic.com slash sidereal tools, and you may want to have a copy handy or uh, go back and look at your chart later. Later, we will talk about a few particular degrees during today's broadcast that you may want to have a look at in your own natal chart. So welcome to the broadcast. I'm Phaedra. I'm the astrologer and artist of Mystic Physic Astrology, and I use Western Sidereal Astrology in my practice to help you reconnect with your soul purpose and to remember why you came. And so my aim with the broadcast is always to provide guidance on how we can consciously use the energy of our trans to affect our lives in a positive way. And so what I'd like to ask you to do is to like and share the broadcast, uh, tag a friend if you know someone who might be interested. You can also follow Mystic Physic on Facebook and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. So thank you for joining me. What is up for today? This is a good question. Well, right now we have several planets in retrograde. Of course, uh, Saturn and Pluto have been Retro, excuse me. Yes, Saturn and Pluto have been retrograde in Sagittarius for some time. Uh, Saturn will actually go direct in September, so not too far off. Neptune is retrograde in Aquarius. We have Mars retrograde in Capricorn through late August. And we also just entered our second Mercury retrograde of this year. Uh, I see someone's on joining me. I can't tell who it is. So say hi if you have a chance, and then I'll be able to see who's on the broadcast. Um, but yes, if things seem like they're not quite moving as fast as you would like them to, or if you even feel like you're going backwards in some ways, that can be why with this retrograde activity. And sometimes what you may experience with the retrogrades is um, kind of an internalization of that planet's energy rather than experiencing it so much external life. Uh, so something to kind of be aware of in terms of how retrogrades affect us. Um, so we entered Mercury's retrograde shadow back on uh, the 6th of July. He'll be retrograde through August 19th, and he'll come out of his shadow towards the end of August. So keep in mind, you will experience Mercury retrograde types of experiences and Mercury retrograde activity throughout the duration of that at varying levels of intensity. Um, with the start and end point of the actual retrograde, the 26th of July and the 18th of August being where you're likely to experience it the most intensely. Uh, and after the 18th of July, you'll feel it kind of taper off as Mercury gets back up to speed. Uh, but we're also in the middle of eclipse season, which is something that we go through about every six months. Um, we've had two eclipses so far in this particular in this particular eclipse period, and actually now that I've uh, refreshed the browser, I'm going to go ahead and pull the broadcast up so that I can see your comments because I'm not seeing them on the phone where I am broadcasting from. So, okay, there we go. Back to the notes. So, in July, we had two eclipses so far, and we are still somewhat feeling the effects of those eclipses. We we have had our new moon solar eclipse in Gemini on the 12th. We just came through on the 27th, and so this one is still kind of an intense phase of it. Uh, on the 27th of July, we had our uh, full moon total lunar eclipse in sidereal Capricorn. Um, and so for this particular eclipse, which we're still under the influence of, this is spotlight drive and ambition, okay? Um, it's a good opportunity to finish up any long-term projects that you've been working on and prepare to give them one final review. Typically, we would encourage you to use a full moon as a launch opportunity, right? To give birth uh, into the world almost. Whatever it is you've been working on, uh, you finish it up and you launch it into the world. That's the best thing to do at a full moon. 
full moon now because we have Mercury and Mars especially retrograde and Saturn who rules Capricorn retrograde I would say hold off hold off until some of this retrograde activity has ended and we've come out of it give it a little bit of space um, but finish up your long-term ambitious projects now and use the remainder of Mercury's retrograde and the remainder of Mars's retrograde potentially to do kind of a comprehensive review of the finished product make sure there's not any uh, tweaks or corrections that you need to go back and make because you can still leverage this full moon lunar eclipse energy at the next full moon in August if you'd like to launch then or even in September okay so you do have a couple of additional opportunities to take advantage of the full moon lunar eclipse in Capricorn that we just had on July 27th that occurred at 9 degrees 45 minutes of Capricorn so if you do have a planet or natal uh, or personal point in your natal chart at 9 or 10 degrees of an earth or water sign you may feel the effects of this particular full moon lunar eclipse quite personally and you may continue to feel uh, further effects throughout the coming 12 months. Uh, traditions can be altered uh, in really radical and unexpected ways in the wake of this particular eclipse in part because of some aspects going on right now between Saturn and Uranus, okay? Um, so these would reflect permanent shifts that we would need to adjust to, okay? So sudden structural changes are possible, but they might also be easier to, to accommodate um, with a, a minimum of upheaval and disruption in our lives, in part because where Uranus typically triggers disruption and upheaval, Saturn is a stabilizing influence. And so when these two kind of dance in a helpful way, uh, as they are in trine right now, that can minimize the kind of disruption and upheaval that we experience as a result of Saturn's stabilizing effect. Okay. Now we do have one more eclipse coming up in August, the new moon solar eclipse on the 11th at 23 degrees 41 minutes of Cancer. So this is another point in your chart where you will want to have a look uh, to see if you have planets or personal points at 23 or 24 degrees of a water or earth sign. So these last eclipses we've been discussing water and earth signs. That's going to be Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces for the water signs, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo for the earth signs. Okay. Now, with our new moon solar eclipse in Cancer, this is a particularly emotional uh, solar eclipse. It can trigger events related to family, related to one or more parents, but especially the mother, or even related to parenthood and motherhood, okay? Also to uh, home or family, real estate, or even property matters uh, can come up significant or um, or sudden events or information might be revealed around these areas. Uh, and there's a potential as well for water related events such as rains or floods uh, or flooding, other water incidences, including a lack of water, okay, um, or uh, incidences or events related to bodies of water. And domestic activity can be uh, something that comes up and issues around women and children and home or family businesses. So there are some areas where you'll want to keep your eye on in, I would say, the coming two weeks, especially as we lead into that new moon, also the week after. And then for some additional dates and information on the entire series of eclipses that we're experiencing through July and August, uh, you can visit our YouTube channel or uh, later today on the website. I will have a video shared on the website where we'll go into a little more detail, not only about degrees to be looking at in your natal chart, but also dates to be looking at. And these are some dates and also some future dates and how to know if any of these eclipses are going to affect you directly in a very strong way. And if so, 
um, how they might come to affect you in the following 12 months uh, because you can continue to feel eclipse influences for up to a year if you have personal chart contact with a particular eclipse. So something that you'll want to explore a little more deeply and of course if you have questions around that for yourself and your own you're always welcome to reach out to me and book an appointment in more depth about your chart in particular. Um, but this particular new moon solar eclipse in Cancer is an experience where you and those around you may be particularly emotional or you may be feeling rather sentimental. Those are uh, some feelings that Cancer activity can pull up in all of us and will feel that more or less strongly depending on how strong we are impacted by this particular eclipse. It's a continuation, this new moon in Cancer and the full moon lunar eclipse in Capricorn that we just had. These are a continuation of an eclipse series which began in February of 2017 and will continue through January of 2019. So these two eclipses in particular have the potential to react themes which arose at those previous eclipses in February and August of 2017 and January of 2018 and so those are some other some other dates that you might want to think back to um, as to whether significant events arose for you you may see those themes come up again in the days and weeks around our very recent full moon lunar eclipse in Capricorn and the upcoming new moon solar eclipse in Cancer Okay. Now also coming up during the first part of August, on the very first, uh, we have a Mars square Uranus aspect in transit and we have Venus entering Virgo. Now that Mars square Uranus could trigger short tempers <laughs> and very impulsive behavior, um, sudden uh, anger, that sort of thing. So tempers could kind of flare in the days around the very beginning of August and just be aware of that there's an elevated risk potentially of accidents uh, resulting from aggressive or impulsive behavior okay Venus entering Virgo this uh, she's getting ready to uh, go into retrograde here in the not too distant future so she's kind of slow and normally Venus will take about three and a half weeks or so to tour sign. She's going to be um, in Virgo for about four and a half weeks this time around, so a little bit longer as she prepares for her upcoming retrograde later on. Uh, but she's going to enter Virgo on the first. And so this is an, uh, a transit where a cooperation uh, in work and daily life will be an active theme for a lot of us. So focus your efforts on partnering with others. Emphasize win-win outcomes. And this is, especially if, if you're familiar with the writings of and the teachings of Stephen Covey, uh, uh, especially in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, this is one thing that he teaches, is that always strive towards win-win outcomes, which is always good advice, uh, but it can serve you particularly well, Venus is in Virgo. So focus on win-win um, outcomes in any type of partnership or joint project or any type of interactions that you have with other people during this coming four and a half weeks. It will benefit you. It will benefit those potential partners that you have. However, don't enter into any long-term agreements just yet. Wait. Uh, wait to see what the month August holds first uh, because we do have Mercury's retrograde ongoing and we both we have eclipses and those are going to impact us during the cup during this time frame this couple of weeks uh, it'll, both you potentially and your partner in uh, terms of raising the possibility that you may want to go back later and make revisions or changes to any sort of partnership agreement or a team arrangement that you might come up with or cooperative agreement that you might come up with but it will also make a difference in terms of what news the eclipses might bring for you because we do know that eclipses are responsible for revealing um, hidden information 
in the days and weeks around the eclipse itself. So wait and see what that information is. Wait and see uh, what things you might need to revise or correct or change going forward. Let Mercury retrograde run its course and let the eclipses run their course and then go back and consider uh, your partnership agreement with that information in hand uh, once we've moved through the month of August. And then also early in the month of August, we have Uranus stationing retrograde. So he'll be retrograde until early 2019. So for the rest of this year, watch for accidents, for surprises, unexpected or sudden events to come up, including sudden insights and rebellious urges, okay? In the days around August 7th when he stations, okay? And he will be stationing retrograde just minutes of longitude shy of perfecting his trine with Saturn. And so that trine with Saturn will influence and color the remainder of Uranus's retrograde through the early days of 2019. Now, like I said, that can bring a stabilizing influence to Uranus's normally uh, unpredictable kind of behavior where he tends to trigger upheaval, okay? Um, so we will have that benefit of having that, that stability uh, play into what we experience around the 7th and coming five months. And then again, especially in the days just after the beginning of the year when Uranus stations direct once again. Okay, so consider what you'll likely experience as new ways of doing things. If you've always had certain things that you do in certain ways over, you know, an extended time frame, so you've, you've done it this way for years, those patterns may be changing in the coming five months. You may be finding new ways of doing the same old thing, new and better ways, okay? What you'll find is, as we move through the retrograde, that any changes that are required are going to become much more evident but the changes themselves will be easier to implement than they might be at any other time with a minimum of disruption and a minimum of people, excuse me. And so this is a time when you will be called on to tap into really innovative thinking. Uh, you'll find innovative thinking is necessary to solve the problems that you're going to, you may encounter in the coming five months while Uranus is retrograde. And you can also learn more about that and how it might affect you individually on a sign-by-sign -sign basis at mysticphysic.com slash monthly horoscopes. Uh, we have a more detailed sign-by-sign -sign forecast and highly customized advice. So be sure and have a look at your August horoscope coming up. Um, the August 2018 overview and short reports and the full horoscopes by sign are live on the website. Right now, available for paid subscribers currently. So, if you have a subscription, you can log in at the time. If you don't have a subscription, they will be available July 1st. You'll be able to read all of that. So, or excuse me, August 1st, so that you get a, a, an understanding of what to expect for August as we go kind of through this season of change. Um, you'll also want to check out what's new on the blog. Later today, I'll be adding a few new uh, blog posts uh, touching on uh, eclipses in general and uh, what we need to know to navigate them well, how we can learn from them, and also how we can use them to our advantage. I will also be releasing later today, uh, it's currently up on YouTube, so if you don't want to wait for me to release it, hit YouTube, um, our replay of the full moon total lunar, lunar eclipse in Capricorn releasing practice, which we just did last week. Uh, the timing is still great to do a releasing practice. If you haven't done one already, I strongly encourage you to do so and capitalize on this eclipse energy. This is big energy. It was a total lunar eclipse that we had. It was also the longest uh, lunar eclipse of the year. And it was in Capricorn, which is a cardinal sign. And so this can be a particularly opportune moment to let go of something that's not serving you any longer and just release it from your experience. And that helps to make room for something new to come in and replace it. Something new and something um, So watch for that video to hit the website. And if you uh, need to jump in and do your full moon releasing practice right away, you can always find it on YouTube, as I said. 
and then we'll also have a video going into more detail on these current three eclipse transits how they affect us how they affect you directly depending on whether they touch anything in your sidereal natal chart uh, so you'll be able to see if they'll affect you directly including when and how and you'll be able to get a sense of how they might continue to affect you in the coming year if you are having personal contact with one of the eclipses in this in this particular series and then also join us in the Sidereal Insights community on Facebook. Coming up, I will be live on Thursday, August 10th, just the day before New Moon Solar Eclipse in Cancer. I'll be live at 7.30 Mountain Daylight Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is 2.30 a.m. British Standard Time, and 11.30 a.m. for those of you joining us from Australian Eastern Standard Time, We'll have our new moon solar eclipse in Cancer guided intention setting practice on the 10th. Um, so definitely join. That's another wonderful opportunity to set intentions for the coming 6 to 12 months around um, Cancer energy and especially around the house that Cancer occupies in your sidereal natal chart. So be sure to join me for that. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel while you're there, and that way you never miss a broadcast. And stay tuned. We are uh, about to announce the release date for the 2019 Ultimate Astrological Planner, and we have some new features and some new options that we're rolling out that in conjunction with that that we're really excited about. So stay tuned for more news about that. Thank you for joining me on today's broadcast. And again, please like or share this broadcast. If you know someone who might benefit, you can tag a friend or send or share it with a friend. Um, we do appreciate your support in that way. Thanks again for joining me and we'll talk next time.